The topic of today is going to be core rank training. And why do I say mindset is the number one thing? It's simple. You know, you have to remember, it doesn't matter what you know. If your mind isn't there, you're never going to grow. Right. Vince Lombardi, uh, he actually you guys know about the, the Super Bowl trophy, the, right? The Super Bowl trophy that they give out for every Super Bowl is called the Vince Lombardi trophy. And the reason why is because at the end of the season, the team that wins, that comes out on top, they get this Vince Lombardi trophy. But a lot of you may not know the reason why it's, a, it's actually a football on the trophy is because Vince Lombardi started out every season, right? Because we all know everything is a season. So when they go and it's postseason and they're having fun and a lot of them got to come back in, into preseason and get reconditioned. Well, Vince Lombardi would come out every new season holding up a, a, a football in the locker room and tell the guys, that's a picture of him doing it right there with reporters and journalists behind him because he did it every year. But he would say, gentlemen, this is a football. Now, you know these pro athletes, right? These, these NFL players know it's a football. But why did he start off every season that way? Because he went down to the fundamentals, the basics. And so how does that relate to core rank? When we talk about core rank, I mean, there's a lot. You guys want to learn about lead generation. You want to learn about how to invite, how to follow up, how to close, how to be a better, you know, recruiter, presenter. It starts with the football. It starts with the mind, right? And so that's why I wanted to start with today. I was asked to speak on it. And I believe because of my background and because of my past, how was somebody like me able to withstand and, and be where I'm at today? It was because I conditioned my mind. See, Muhammad Ali says, if the mind can conceive it and my heart can believe it, then I can achieve it, right? And then there's different types of mindsets, right? You have a fixed mindset and a growth mindset. Well, in here, this example, we call it reactive versus proactive, right? There's a good book that comes on the next uh, that you're going to see that I got this from, but reactive mindsets are people that think negative, right? Proactive mindsets are people that think positive. You have, you know, the pessimistic mindset and the optimistic mindset. And so how do you know, right? Well, a reactive mindset, somebody's going to be like, you know, when it relates to the business, how many of you had agents or prospects that said, look, I, I don't have time to build this. Type a one in the chat, right? I know that for a fact, because I get that just about all the time, right? That's a reactive mindset. So you got to reprogram your mind to think proactively and, and say, instead of, I don't have time to build this, I will make time or find a way, right? See, that's a proactive mindset. Somebody that doesn't look for no excuse. Another one is somebody that says, I'm not good at sales. How many of you guys told yourself that, right? Well, a proactive mindset is I'm willing to learn a new skill. See, what many of you don't know is that sales is in life in general. I sold my wife to say yes when I asked her to marry me. My kids sell me to stay up night and watch TV, right? They sell my grandma all the time, my mom, their grandma, to be able to watch YouTube, right, when they're with them. That's why they always want to stay over there, because we don't do it. But you got to think proactively. Another one is people say, I keep getting no's, right? I remember Babe Ruth. How many of you know Babe Ruth, right? Babe Ruth actually had the most strikeouts. And then Babe Ruth also, what people don't know, or Babe Ruth had the most home runs, but what people don't know is he had the most strikeouts. And then his record was beat by Barry Bonds, and what a lot of people don't know is Barry Bonds not only had the most home runs that beat Babe Ruth, but he also had the most strikeouts. What a coincidence. So instead of saying I keep getting no's, say I'm closer to my next yes. Babe Ruth, whenever he struck out, he would always say and tell everybody, I feel bad for the next pitcher because I'm closer to my next home run. He had a proactive mindset. And then somebody might say, I don't know anyone, right? How many people are like that? Like, I don't know anyone. When, why not think I could finally meet new people? Why not look at it as a, a proactively, right? And then last but not least, somebody that says, I don't like speaking in front of people. 
guys, I did not like speaking in front of people. I still don't like it. I still get, you know, uh, uh, jittery. I still have that. But you know what I do? I look at the angle. I look at the payoff. Will it inspire somebody? Will it impact somebody? Nothing fulfills me more than when I'm at a convention or somewhere and somebody brings up one of my testimonies and said, man, you inspired me. And that's why I get up and do this. So think proactively and say, I'm now able to work on my public speaking, right? And so again, reactive and proactive mindsets, very important. Another thing about the mind, you have to condition it. 10,000 hours is typically how long it takes somebody to master a skill. So you should always work on your mindset, see? If you work at a job for 40 to 50 hours a week, right? And you're there for 10 years, you should be a master, right? You typically are, you're a master employee, right? You're not the head of the company. You're just a master of being an employee. And so when I learned that, I said, look, I might as well apply 10,000 hours of a skill that I love. If you think about a gymnast, right? They start at three years old. Look at the Olympics that's going on right now. Many of these, you know, gold medalists, you don't realize it, but they start at the age of three years old and their peak, their, their pinnacle, their highlight of their entire life is when they're 17, 18 years old playing at the Olympics to get a gold medal. They put in 10,000 hours. So why don't you put in 10,000 hours to develop a skill and reach your pinnacle level? right? And so very important guys, 10,000 hours, that's what makes you a master at anything. But again, these are the books that I highly recommend. There's one book on there that I did not put on there from the original time. And after I seen everybody sharing this, I wanted to bring it back. Although these are the seven habits of highly effective people talked about reactive and proactive mindsets. In fact, how many of you, and I remember, I know she's probably on here too, but it's okay. I, I, I don't want to throw under the bus, but I'm going to. Sometimes we wake up and, and we may go to the grocery store and the cashier may be, you know, excuse my friends, a, 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 a biatch, right? And so my, I remember my wife would tell me like, man, why she, why she got so, you know, why she got to be, have this negative stank attitude? And, and I told her, I said, you don't know what she's going through. In this book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Dr. Covey, he talks about it. It was Sunday morning and nobody was on this. It was like five people in a subway station and he's reading the paper, the author, and this guy comes on with his kids. And these are like baby kids. They're like running around, you know, jumping on seats, three o'clock in the morning on a Sunday. And so everyone's looking at the guy's kids and the guy reading the book, the author uh, looks at the dad and says, you're gonna tame your kids? And the dad takes his hands out of his face and he said, you know, you're right. I probably should, but I don't know what to tell them. We just left the hospital and their mother died. Think about that next time when someone gives you an attitude or somebody tells you, Maybe they're going through something you don't know what that person is going through, right? So the seven habits of highly effective people taught me a lot. I highly encourage that book. Your first year in network marketing, you guys are going to see how that book changed my life. It showed me, it basically gave me the one-on-one -on, -one on network marketing and set me up. See, my mindset was, was so, was like when I first read that book, the first chapter talked about the rejection rocket. And I can remember the rejection rocket is when you want to do something, you're going to get the biggest, you're going to get turned down by the people you love the most. And, and just to give you an example, you guys seen it before, I do it all the time, but I remember coming home after reading about the rejection rocket and I said, look, I'm going to go ahead and put this to the test. So I came home after seeing my first network marketing presentation, super excited. I get home and I tell my wife who's in bed. 10 30 at night because she works for a medical assistant and it's lights off i open the door boom kick open the door turn on the lights and say baby i got it i know what we're gonna do i know what i can do i finally found my calling i'm gonna join a network marketing company we're gonna travel the world 
I'm going to stop DJing and I'm going to retire you so we can spend time with the kids. And she said, no, the, we're not, David. Turn off the lights. I need to go to work in the morning. And I said, now, normally people would like just melt down and sink to the floor. And you probably would have quit. You probably would have quit before you got started. But not me. That book taught me that. I already anticipated that coming. My mind was already mentally prepared for that. Guess what happened to me? I said, cool, I'm gonna continue to read this book. And I knew if I buy someone's opinion, I'm buying their lifestyle. See, I wouldn't trade places with her at that time. Even though I was just a DJ, she was making 14 an hour as a medical assistant. I wasn't gonna trade my life for that. So you shouldn't either, right? And so that's what I learned, guys. That book completely changed my life. So that is a great book for the mindset. But then to go further with it, right? Then we have How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. They teach this in corporate America. And it just basically, God gave you two ears and one mouth, right? So you can listen twice as much as you speak. And that's what this book is about. There's a, there's a, there's a chapter in the book where the guy was trying to sell this guy this whole time and he never wanted to buy from him, this big CEO. But eventually the CEO ended up buying from him. How? Because he got drunk in the, in the, in the bar and the guy was there and all because he listened to the CEO for hours. The guy didn't even, you know, he was kind of tired of listening to the CEO, but the CEO said, you know what? We had a good conversation. What is it that you sell? He was like, I sell socks. And he was like, you know what? Go see my receptionist. We'll buy. And he actually made the deal. So sometimes you just got to shut the hell up and listen to people. So highly recommend those books. I know you've seen these before, but I'm going to tell you one book that really changed my life and my mind. And that's Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, right? That was the first book I read and I never put it on here. So I just wanted to tell you guys to make sure you go get that. And then moving forward, right? I don't know if you guys ever seen this, but to me, this was golden, right? There's gonna be, you know, for time's sake, I'm gonna go ahead and play this another time for you guys, uh, but highly recommend it. And uh, another thing that I learned recently, and these are three mindset principles that I learned from Jim Rohn. So if you're taking notes, I want everybody to remember this because these three ideas that he taught completely changed my life and the way that I thought about things. So number one, Jim Rohn said, for things to change, you have to change. You see, the exploration of personal development, those books, they changed my life. Instead of hoping for things to change, I needed to change. Instead of hoping... For things to get better, I needed to get better. And so I'm telling you, don't wish for things to change, guys. Don't wish for things to get better. Wish that you become better. You see, Jim Rohn also says, it isn't the set of the sails. It's not, it's, it's not the direction of the wind that determines which way we will go. See, the same wind blows on us all. The wind of, you know, depression, the same wind, anxiety, success, all that wind blows on us all. It isn't the wind, it's the way that we set our sail to go in the direction you wanna go. I thought those were the most powerful words I ever heard in my life. And so ask yourself, if you're not happy with what's going on right now in your life, I can guarantee you one thing, five years from now, 10 years from now, if you don't change, it's going to look exactly the same. So change that. And then number two, second thing Jim Rohn taught that I love was success is not to be pursued. See, a lot of people chase success. It's no different than chasing butterflies. Success is not to be pursued. It's to be attracted by the person you become. When I heard that, I said, wow, you mean to tell me I... I had to become more attractive in business for people to that so that people would be attracted to me. Guys, if I showed you pictures of me back in the day, I used to, you know, I used to do music. So you can imagine I wore fake chains. I had double edges. I mean, it was I, a lot of these artists still do that today, just so you know. But 
I will tell you, the moment that I took care of myself and I, and I became a better person, that's when success came to me. It was like a magnet. And so when I learned that second philosophy, that completely changed my mind. Now, the third and probably the most important one was what Jim Rohn said, formal education will make you a living, right? A paycheck, but self-education will make you a fortune. See, formal education, everyone goes through. I told you guys I went to school. C's and D's got degrees, right? We all went through that. They taught us to go to school, right? They taught us to go and, and, and have lunch in the middle of the day and then go back and then go home and do it all over again. We were preconditioned for that. That's formal education. That's how we make a living. That's how we pay our dues. But self-education, that's not taught. That's something you develop. And when you develop it, that's when you make a fortune. See, you have to do that. Now, I remember back in the day, I never would read. I would listen to audios all the time. But Jim Rohn said, no, you have to be a reader. Readers are leaders. And so I encourage you, if you are one of those that, that don't like to read, start off by reading 10 pages a day. I promise you, in 30 days, you, you done read 100, you, you, you basically read 100 pages in 30 days. Now, those are the three. And after I learned that, one of the readings I've learned was, was this philosophy of the four personalities. You see, we talk to people every day. And when you talk to people, you got to know who you're talking to. Because a lot of people have different mindsets. A lot of people were brought up different. And so I learned from a gentleman named Mark Cassetta, but this is taught everywhere. You guys learned about it through the, you know, you learned through it from the seasons, winter, spring, summer, fall. I like the colors because this geared towards network marketing, but you need to know what color you are. We, we are all the colors, but you need to know what colors you lack and what are your strengths. See me, when I first started, I was a blue. I was straight, I was like really blue. You know, I loved to have fun. I was the life of the party, probably why I was a DJ, probably why my wife hated me, because I enjoyed, I had no problem meeting new people. But I was also disorganized. I couldn't make, you know, make it to an event on time if I tried. And I know you guys are probably chuckling right now. I'm still like that somewhat, but at least I've been working on it, right? And so now I'm not predominantly blue. My red kind of took over, but just to let you guys know the opposite of blue, if you know somebody that is a blue, you're going to invite them to a webinar about 30 minutes early, just so they can make it on time. Now, the opposite of a blue would be a green. A green is somebody that is a researcher. They'll, they'll show up early, right? They're slow to make decisions. How many people know people that make decisions, but you tell them about this and they want to think, they want all the details. They want all the facts and dates. You have to be able to read your people. And then you have red and yellow and they bump heads a lot too. See a red is self-motivated. Reds are, are leaders because they're self-driven. They wanna be number one in everything. They're very competitive, but reds, and they're also flashy. Reds like the finer things in life. You can even tell a red in the projects. Why? Because they'll have on some, they'll have on Jordans. They'll have on, you know, you'll always find the red in the crowd, right? But then you have the opposite of red, which is a yellow. And a yellow, you know, they don't put themselves first like a red. They put others in front. Yellows do actually great in recruiting because they show people they care. The only thing with yellows is they tend to be emotional. And if you're a dysfunctional yellow, it can be a problem. So this is why I said the mindset, learning this philosophy, and this has been around for ages. This was taught with Socrates, Plato. This taught in Greek. This is what they, this is how they, they learn personalities. And so once you know that, you'll be able to know how to present information to somebody that you're talking to. And so I encourage everybody to take this personality test and share it with your upline, share it with your leader. That way they know how to coach and mentor you and train you. But it's also good because when you're sharing this with somebody, you can partner up another yellow with a yellow. The last thing you want is to, you know, 
tell somebody that they can get a Mercedes Benz and this person's an executive vice president making half a million in business and, and you're presenting that to a yellow. They're gonna hang up or leave the webinar. You have to make sure you can obviously cater to your tribe and know who you're talking to. So take the test. It's a video that tells you a little more about it. So very, I mean, that was one of the best things that I've ever learned. And so I use it till this day. And that's why it's in this training. And then last but not least, guys, you guys know what this is, right? This is bamboo. But what a lot of people don't know about the bamboo, and look, I'll show you how much I love this. This right here, you can see the bamboo in my room, in my office. I got this bamboo for, for, for that reason, to remind me. Anytime I feel like giving up or quitting, or anytime I feel like just, you know, leaving. This is what the bamboo taught me. And you guys can reach. I wasn't going to train on this until I researched it. Years ago, I found out this is true. The Chinese bamboo seed, if you plant it in the ground, it will sit in the ground for five years and appear not to make any changes. Literally, like anybody that's growing their business. You may not have been five years growing your business, but let's say five months. People laughed at me. I have friends and family didn't believe in me. See, if you throw a Chinese bamboo seed in the ground and water it, your neighbors will walk out to you, you know, maybe one year one, year two, they're kind of worried about you. Year three, they're laughing and they're probably going to call the cops on you. They're probably going to tell you like, hey, man, are you OK? What are you watering here? Nothing is growing. What is the purpose? But then after five years, in just six weeks, the bamboo will grow 90 feet tall. And if you guys ever seen bamboo, it grows like wildfire. It, 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 it's really, it grows fast. And it's also pretty strong. So my question to you guys, how long did it take for the bamboo to grow? Five years or six weeks? Right? How many of you guys think five years? How many of you guys think six weeks? The real answer, it takes five years and six weeks. Because if you don't water it, cultivate it, or nurture it, it will die. You have to water it in order for it to grow the entire time. But once it grows, it grows strong. How does that relate to this business? In 2016, I told you I was a convicted felon. I told you. I had my families laugh at me. I told you my wife did not believe it. I told her my dream, my vision. And she basically told me to shut up. She needed to go to sleep, <laughs> to go to work. And in 2016, when I went ahead and signed up anyways, I knew it would take time, but I was willing to learn. I was willing to work on my mindset. This picture right here was the first company that I joined in 2016. This is me in the nosebleeds, 22,000 people in attendance. You can see people look like ants. And I saw people walk the stage with six figure rings. And I said, oh man, you know, that's awesome. Hearing those stories, people like me. And, and they were like, man, I always thought to myself, one of these days, one day I will walk the stage. I was willing to do it for 10 years. And so, I was so like, I, I, I was, how do I say it? I basically listened to, to myself and, and decided I was gonna do this with or without anybody. And sure enough, I watered, cultivated and nurtured my mind. That's me reading your first year in network marketing while my parents were having this little vacation. They're like, put the book down, David. I was like, no, I gotta read. I gotta keep feeding, watering, cultivated. They laughed at me like the guy watering the bamboo. And sure enough, 2018, I had a little team with me. See some familiar faces, right? 2018, I had about, you know, maybe four or five agents. But they weren't agents, they were reps back then. But we started growing little by little. And then I was able to transition because you never know when God sends, you know, you a blessing. 
And that same year, 2018, I got started with this company and everything that I learned. See, you got to understand when you water and cultivate it, it may not be in that vehicle, but I was able to transition and carry everything over because of my mind and all of the training I did. And guess what happened, guys? I ended up coming in and, and uh, getting started here. When I met with Mr. Xavier Marrero in March 2018. And so this, this is an old little picture that I found in my phone, but it just reminded me, it kept me over. It's, always remember this, grapes got to be crushed to make wine. Diamonds are formed under pressure. Olives are pressed to release oil. Seeds grow in darkness. So whenever you feel crushed, you know, people laugh at you. You, you feel like you're under pressure, pressed. Nobody in your family believes you. Your own spouse, or you feel like you're in darkness. You're in a powerful place of transformation. Just trust the process. Because of that, guys, I'm going to show you right here. I ended up going from that, from where we were at in 2016. You see, I was in the nosebleeds. And we became executive vice president. Notice I said we, because it wasn't me, it was my entire team. But in 2021, we were able to achieve that. Now, the best part about it, it's not the title. It was the people we were able to help. I was able to help others to think like me, to do the exact same thing and inspire those. And I just love the fact that we were able to do it together. And I see several of them on here. I wanna show you guys something that, that I just went through. And um, I've, I was up in the nosebleeds just a couple of few years ago, but look what happened since then. Crazy, right? I wanted to be a six-figure earner just years before sitting in the nosebleeds and we were able to accomplish that. And so when I tell you, stick with it, focus on your mindset because that's going to do it for you. It's not the skills. The skills is only 10%. So at the end of the day, if the going gets tough and you are at your breaking point, show resilience like that bamboo tree. Bend, but never break. Always focus on working on your mind. See, Henry Ford said it best, whether you think you can or can't, either way, you're right. And a lot of you don't know Henry Ford didn't build his first car until he was over 40 years old. And that's what he's known for today. Always remember guys, 90% mindset, 10% skill set. So here's an assignment I'm gonna give everybody. I want everybody to develop the right mindset. Number one, listen to 30 minutes of personal development, motivational audios, or read 10 pages of a book. We gave you a few. You can listen to Earl Nightingale. That was Jim Rohn's mentor. He taught me a lot too. Number two, attend the next training. We have a training at seven o'clock coming up that we're gonna be doing teaching you how to present. These are where the skills come in. Number three, stay plugged in. Always be the camp around the campfire. Because if you ain't around the campfire, what happens? You get cold. And if you keep wandering, you're eventually going to get lost. And so with that, guys, that's my time. I want to thank you all. Appreciate every single one of you. Love y'all. Uh, I'm just truly blessed to be a part of this organization. And I look forward to seeing everybody's growth. 
seeing everybody at the top. Let's get it. God bless. See you guys.